Leslie from ColouringQueen.net and today I want to review the Faber-Castell Polychroma Coloured Pencils with you. Now I've had mine for a few years now. Over time I've replaced a few so you may notice some difference in the barrels uh, when we go through them. Now Faber-Castell is one of the world's oldest pencil manufacturers. They were founded in 1761. They are still run by the same family, out based out of Germany, now in their eighth generation. And their pencils and their art products that they create a range of are well known for their high quality. And just even looking at the packaging, the pencils are available in the largest set of 120, which is what I'm showing you today. This is available in either a tin, which is what I have, or a beautiful wooden box, which is obviously a little bit more expensive. You can also get these in sets of 60, 36, 24, and 12 if you need to. And one of the things I love about Faber-Castell is that you can buy them open stock. So you can buy one pencil at a time. They're extremely well packaged. So they've got these little lift up strings on the side of the plastic case, which is quite sturdy for a little bit of cheap plastic. And the actual pencils are all lined up in a beautiful array of colors there. There are three trays in the 120 set. I've stored these in my tin for years and they've traveled and been thrown around and whatnot and gone through moving house with no problem at all. On the back you have the colors, so all presented out nicely for you. And Faber-Castell also has those as a color chart that you can download and color in from their website. I started off with a tin of 36 to see whether I liked them or not. And I still use this tin. I still use the pencils from it. Whenever you see me testing polychromos on different papers and whatnot, it's usually from this tin that I'm still using. So using the Faber-Castell colour charts that they provide on their website, I swatched the colours out and you can see them all there. Beautiful range of colours. Now these are oil-based pencils. And they're meant to be smudge proof and waterproof as well, which is great. The other thing about them is that the company states that they can be used on a variety of surfaces like wood, stone, leather and metal. Now, I did try them on my metal back scratcher and it just smudged off for me. So I think that you would have to set it or spray it maybe if you were going to use. I mean it certainly goes on the metal but it doesn't really stay. don't know whether you can see that on camera or not. I seem to have a range of back scratches here. So I tried it on this wood back scratcher and it has a coating on it so I don't know whether that's affecting things but it certainly goes on the wood but it looks like it could smudge off but I don't know. Maybe wood is a lot more effective than what I thought. I'll try it on my little wooden puppy dog and see how it goes there. Uh, try it on the bottom. Oh yeah, that's way better, isn't it? Now, does it come off? It does come off a little bit, but not too much. So one of the things that I really love about Faber-Castell products is that they have a unique system of color matching. So their entire range works together. So if I pick up dark cadmium yellow from the Faber-Castell Polychromos, in the Albert Durer, which is their watercolor pencils, there will also be a dark cadmium yellow, which is here, with the same number on it. So doesn't that make it easy? You can just cross match everything together. So if you did a base of 
a watercolour and then you want to go over it and add a bit more depth with your pencils, you've got the exact match there. And that's also available with their pit markers and some of their other products. I don't have them, but they all work together. And you can easily tell the difference because Polychromo's got a round barrel and the Albert Durer have got a hexagonal barrel. It's same colours, exactly. Now these are artist grade pencils. They're oil based. They come pre-sharpened. I can't tell whether the core is centered on them or not because unlike a Prismacolor, they have a covered end cap there. So that's it up against a Prismacolor. And you can see that the end cap is colored here on the Polychromos. But you never have any complaints with Polychromos. They are a really good product. They're luxurious, they're really well made, and I doubt that you would ever have any problems with the core not being centered. And you can see the length of them up against a Prismacolor. They've got the gold cap around the edge and that gold writing where the name of the colour is in German and in English. So over here we have a terracotta in German and in English next to it. And then we have the pencil number. So if you're ordering them, it's the last three numbers on the end. And then these little three stars is the light fast rating. So a light fast rating of three stars is the maximum light fastness under the Fab Castell Polychromos light fast ratings. A light fastness of one star is reasonable and two is a high light fastness. So it's either one, two or three stars and you'll find those just right there at the end. Now since I bought my set, the barrel information has changed a little bit. So the pink is the new barrel information as compared to my old set. And you'll see that it's just got fuchsia, one, two, three, so the last three numbers and the light fast rating there on the end, whereas before it was the German name, the English name, and then the full numbering system there. And we've also got a milli hair. It, those milli hairs, they get in everywhere. Now the barrel is wood and the colour reasonably matches the pencil colour. Nothing is ever perfect in barrel colours. It's really hard to match a paint to a pigment, but they're a reasonable match. If we have a look at the cadmium yellow, we can see it's a pretty reasonable match to the colour of the swatch, to the colour of the pencil barrel. They come pre-sharpened, so you don't need to sharpen them. But should you need to sharpen them from time to time, they sharpen really well. I just use my little m &R pencil sharpener. It's my cheap and cheerful pencil sharpener that I always tend to use. And we'll just give this one a bit of a sharpen. That's a reasonable point on that one. So very easy to sharpen up the pencil. Because they're oil based, they tend not to get the bloom that Prismacolors get uh, when you're adding layers, but we'll test them out on a couple of colouring books. But first of all, I want to show you some of the pencils that they no longer have available. And believe me, I have scoured the world and I don't know where you could get some of these pencils nowadays, but I've had a few for a couple of years now. So I'll show you the two of the pencils. Originally, the largest set that Faber-Castell produced their pencils in was 100 pencils and Prismacolor do 150, so that's like 50 pencils short. 
So in about the year 2000, Faber-Castell expanded its range and added 20 new pencils. Actually, they added 23 new pencils because they removed three pencils. So the pencils they removed were soft black, light violet, number 139, and light blue, number 147. Now I've scoured uh, so many places looking for soft black. So if you had soft black, I would love to get it. But these are the light blue and the light violet. And before anyone asks, I don't know where you can get these nowadays. It took me weeks and months of emailing around the world to get these. And this blue pencil cost me an absolute fortune. <laughs> I'd love to get that soft black though, just to finish it up. So they expanded the range to the 120 pencils that we have today. So in effect, when you take out the three that they removed, these two and the soft black, they actually added 23 colours in. And uh, if I remember, I'll put on my blog a list of the new colours that came in in 2000. Now since the year 2000, they haven't really played with the range, so who knows whether they will in the future or not. I hope they do because when I did a colour wheel for this, I could tell that there are quite a few pencils that are missing from the colour families and it would be really good to have those and have a bigger range of the polychromos. I'd love to see 150, I'm greedy. So let's test out our polychromos on some colouring pages and we'll check how they arrays as well. As usual, my colour swatches will be on my blog if you would like to look at them in person. And I'll show you these light blue and the light violet that now are no longer available so that you can see what they look like. I might try them with the blue violet that's in the current range. Now this is a Hannah Lynn colouring book. It's printed on KDP or Create Space paper. Going on very smoothly. People often complain about this paper. Usually it's just a matter of using pencils that suit the paper. Goes on so easy. And the thing with the polychromos is that you don't really need to layer as much as you do with Prismacolors. Although in my opinion, Prismacolors produce far more vibrancy than the polychromos. Again, that's just my opinion. Please don't hate me. But everyone knows I'm a little bit biased towards my prizzies. It goes on really smoothly. And you don't need to do as many layers, in my experience, with these as with the Prismacolors. But your experience obviously might be different. But they are easy to colour with. And in a lot of books like Create Space... I think I'd be better off using them sometimes just to uh, save my wrist because usually with a Prismacolor I'll be going over and over it and with these I don't really need to at all. Just one, one layer and you're done. So very easy to work with the Create Space paper. And don't worry, I will put these two on the swatch in a minute. And we'll just see how that erases. I've got my Tombow Mono Zero eraser here. And we'll just take it out a bit. Comes off pretty easily. And it's good that it's uh, according to Faber-Castell smudge proof. That's a bonus. So it is lightening it with the Tombow Mono. We'll try the Derwent. The Derwent electric eraser seems to be far superior in removing the colour on the Hannah Lynn colouring book. I really must finish this picture. I keep using it just to test out my colours on. Uh, let's try it in a Japanese colouring book. This is one by Ari. I think this has been my test page. We might uh, colour this uh, wagon wheel thing here. I'm just going to do two reds. It goes on quite smooth. It feels like it's got a bit of a different texture from the Create Space paper. 
but a lot of pigment is coming out which is what I like about Faber-Castell polychromos you don't need to uh, do much to get the pigment out when I first was using them I was treating them like a Prismacolor and doing a lot of layers and whatnot I found them very hard on my hand and then over time I've been using them a little bit more and I realized that I was coloring with them like I would with a Prismacolor and using lots of light layers which I do think improves the vibrancy of your coloring page but with the polychromos you don't need to. So far I haven't needed to use my blender pencil and the Faber-Castell doesn't come with a blender pencil probably because their products are oil based and they seem to sort of smooth out naturally. When you buy Prismacolors you get a blender pencil in the large set. Faber-Castell don't even make a blender as far as I know. But if I was using a blender, it would probably be my Caran Dash. So I've got a lot of pencil on there. So let's see if we can erase it. So first of all, I'll try my Tombow Mono and see how easy it is to erase. So that's great uh, to get through those layers. If you just want to add maybe some highlights, take a bit of color off. So not too bad from the Tombow. Next up, I'll try the Derwent. And the Derwent, of course, is far more effective at removing the color of the polychromos. Now let's try it in World of Flowers. So we'll try one of these flowers just with those same colors. And the reason that I've got three different books is just to show you the different types of paper, because most of you will have some type of book that might be from a print-on-demand company like Create Space KDP or a company of Japanese book or maybe a Joanna Bassford style book so it's just to give you a range of how it works with different papers and my swatch is on just normal photocopy paper so I'll swatch those two pencils for you on copy paper and erase them and then you should get a good idea of how the different colors work so we'll just uh, try it here. Her pencil is very soft and creamy to go on, which kind of surprises me because I'm so used to my Prismacolors and it is super easy just to put color on this book. It's just going on so easily and I can see why they don't need a, a blender pencil in their range. There's something about the German quality I find. I always find products from Germany to be really good and just everything about these pencils is well made and really good. You've got to credit a company that's been around for over 200 years. So they must be doing something right. I think they employ over 7,000 people and I've seen uh, movies on how their pencils are made. You can watch them on YouTube as well. History of the company, etc. You know, they're so interesting watching the amount of pencils that they produce and how they do it. And I'm going to add an extra layer of colour just to see how they layer up. I colour pretty lightly on the first one. It might be heavy compared to how light some people colour, but I don't know, we've all got different styles. And they really just, when you add extra colour, they really, and go over it, they really just blend out themselves. I know a lot of people in uh, Europe find it difficult to get Prismacolors, but really, you've got so many pencil manufacturers that are outstanding quality on your doorstep, you know. I don't know that I'd worry too much when you have like this and Caran d'Ache. What I really love is the art system that they have where all the products have the same numbering and colouring across their art range. I think that's really clever and it's just really great if you're using something that you can back it up with the marker or the pencil or the watercolour from the actual same colour. I mean, sometimes they're close, but they're all the same same, so it makes it super easy, I think. 
So I'm pretty happy with the colours and the vibrancy on that. I'm going to try and erase it with my Tombow Mono. I'm going to do maybe a highlight down here. And I think I will have to use my polys more often now. But I'm just trying to get used to the fact that they're not they don't work the way that Prismacolors work, you know, you don't have to do all those layers and be really soft. So the Tombow Mono was great for putting some highlights in, but as usual, it's the big gun, I think, that will really get the paper clean if that's what we want to do. So that's got a lot of colour off, but I think we'd really have to work hard at it in order to get it completely clear of that colour. and. It hasn't damaged on the other side, but I wouldn't like to try it too much, but I'm pretty happy enough with that. So let's try the polychromos on some black paper as well, and I'll use my white pencil from the polychromos set, see how it turns out. I'm using the Spectrum Noir Colorista Dark Pad. I've reviewed these before, and they're my go-to for testing out things on black paper. So this is my black paper sample page. So we'll try the reds. So the red goes on really well. I went in a bit hard at first and uh, I had to pull back because <laughs> they were, it was burnishing up too quickly for me. I'm so used to my Prismacolors that it's quite different to get used to using something else. Now, I really like how it's uh, going so easily on there. We'll try some of the white, and the white shows up really well. You're actually getting that white. It's not all blending in. And we can use that to obviously tint down these colours. So it's very rough. I'm standing up as I normally am when I colour these things in. And the simple reason I do that is so that I don't have to move my lights and whatnot. I just want to see what it's like if we go back over with a bit more red. It's actually coming up a lot more vibrant than I thought it would. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased and I'm pretty pleased with the white because I've tried the white before and it's never been my favourite white. My favourite white's usually my Prismacolor or my Curran uh Luminance white. But I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with the white on this black paper. And look at that, white, white. On black paper, just as good. Now I will put these swatches on my blog so that you can see them clearly. Let's swatch out that blue. So this no longer exists uh, for sale, this pencil. It is the light blue. Now I know that I will get people saying, where did you get them from and all the rest of it. The place where I bought these from no longer exists anymore. And I have checked so many places around the world, not just Australia, around the world. I spent a good month a couple of years ago checking all different sources uh, where I could get extra of these so that I could tell you about it years ago. And there was no one. Um, with the soft black, I tried you know, all over and I thought I'd finally track them down in Spain. And then unfortunately they cancelled my order. And the light violet, there is very little stock of that available. It's probably the easier one to get out of all of them. But in Australia, I don't know of anyone that has any stock of it at present. But just, you know, keep an eye out if they're things that you want. Personally, I don't think that you need them. You can always find another colour in another brand just to make this up. I kind of want it just so that I have the, the whole range, you know. And this is the light violet.
and again personally I you know I wouldn't waste your efforts looking for it <laughs> because I know how much time I spent you know fruitlessly searching and emailing and phoning people and talking to people for hours about how to source these and I just think that you could get another colour from a, another range of pencils that looks the same. They might not be oil based and they might not be exactly the same. And honestly, do you really need them? But anyway, I wanted to show you what they looked like. So that's the light blue and the light violet that's no longer part of the set. And there we have our swatch charts. I will put links to these on my blog and we've tested how they sharpen how they erase how they perform on copy paper like this and how they perform on various coloring books i really like my polychromos i will be using them more in the future and i'll also be reviewing those albert durer uh, watercolors and one of the things that i there's a few things a few pros for me with the polychromos First of all, they're very smooth to blend. You don't really need a blender or another solution to blend them out. They have a beautiful range of colors. They're quite vivid. And I love the way the color system works. So I can color something in the watercolor and have the polychromo to go over it. And it's the same color, the same number, just a different shape on the barrel. The other big pro for me is that they are available as open stock pencils. And you know, there's another little pro there as well. These guys have been around for so long and they make such good quality products and they're always innovating and doing something and researching and, and trying to bring good art products out there. So they've got stickability and they really know their market and they know what artists like. And I think that's important because they're not going to leave any time in the future. You're not going to get attached to polychromos and they're going to stop making them because they've been making them for a long long time now so I think that's also a really important thing to do like a company that focuses on one thing and does it really well like art products with Faber Castell. The cons of these pencils is that there's a lot of colours that there's not many colours in the range and you might need to supplement those in those colour families with colours from different brands. Now personally that doesn't worry me at all because I've got lots of pencils and quite frankly I'm never going to use them all and really I don't know out of the pencils I've been using out of that set of 36 and some of the ones from 120 there was really only four or five pencils that I've needed to replace because I don't use all the colours. We tend to gravitate towards our favourite colours so for me, I'd like the polychromos to have more orange in it. For some reason, I love to colour orange, but I would hate to wear it. <laughs> but um, for some reason, it's one of my favourite colours to colour with. I think we all get used to our own styles. Anyway, I'm rambling. That's it from me. Stay safe. Until next time, happy colouring.